Welcome back, everyone. We're pleased to have 2011 champion Rory McIlroy to the 2020 U.S. Open interview area. Rory is currently number four in the world, a four-time major champion, and he is making his 12th start in the U.S. Open. Rory, just to start it off, just some initial reactions to the course here at Wingfoot. Yeah, it's uh, it's awesome. I, I've never been here before. Uh, this is the first, first time I've had a look at it. Um, played 18 holes yesterday and loved... Love what I what I saw. It's um, it's hard, obviously, but I think it's very very fair. Um, I said to someone yesterday when I played Oakmont for the first time. You know, my initial reaction was this place is impossible. Where it's not this this course doesn't feel quite as it gives you a little more chances if you miss it. I guess you can run the ball up onto the greens and um, maybe a touch more playable. Uh, but it's it's a tough track, and uh, I'm still learning it as I as a as I go here. I'm going to go and play nine holes this afternoon after this. Um, but you know, I I loved what I what I saw yesterday morning, and you know, excited to to get going. We're going to go here to Rex. Rory, you said yesterday you didn't think it was quite playing as long as maybe you, you thought, or at least if you look at the card. Can you talk about maybe how you think it's going to play for the week, and what's the most challenging part of this golf course? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think when you when you read articles about golf courses and you, Dan and I were having this discussion yesterday. It's you know they they, they sometimes they get so hyped up and so you know made into these you know it's a wonder this is a wonderful golf course and you know I think one of the best that that I've played for a U.S. Open. But you know, you still get here and it you know I thought I was going to have to hit like driver five iron into every par four and and it, it isn't quite like that. It's still there's still places where precision beats beats power, uh, and and that's been the case here at U.S. Opens in 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 the past. But um, not as many drivers off tees as I thought there would be, um, which is good. You know, you got to put your ball into position, and then once once you do that, you, then you know that's that's a tough that's a tough part. And then you know, getting it onto the right levels of these greens, leaving it below the hole, you know, giving yourself, you know, decent putts, you know, it's all, I mean, I think this place tests every single aspect of your game. Um, so I, I don't think I could single out the toughest thing that you need to do or the hardest thing that you're going to have to do this week. It's all, it's all pretty tough. We're going to go to Daniel on the left. You said not many drivers. I'm curious, six and 11, um, do you think you'll be going for, for six and, and just more generally speaking, yeah. How do you go about mapping your strategy for for kind of risk reward holes like that, where you know the data or some visualization might say you know go for the green or yeah. classic wisdom might say lay back? How do you, how do you approach that? Yeah, so um, you know again, there, there's not you know this course is a little different than it was in in previous championships, so there isn't much data to look back on and see what what other guys did. And you know you think about the last major championship played here in '06. Um, the the game has changed dramatically since then in the last 14 years you know the, the game is different and uh so I, I don't think you know other other stops that we go to throughout the year you can go look back on previous years and see what and, and maybe make a like the 10th at riviera for example you have data for that every year yeah everyone knows by now the best way to play that hole is to go for the green that's the most likely way you're going to make a three um but for here you don't really have that so you know it's a matter of playing practice rounds getting comfortable like honestly, on the sixth hole, I'm more comfortable hitting a driver up at the green than I am hitting a three iron for a layup. So it's a, it's a that hole is certainly one that suits my eye and suits you know hitting a cut driver in there and you know hitting shots from the front bunker there yesterday. It seems like you know if you're in that front bunker, is pretty good to to most pin positions. Uh, and then on 11, I, I can't see, I don't see many people hitting driver on 11. It's you know, it, you can carry that bunker on the left, but then the the fairway is like a hog's back. It just doesn't seem as if a ball can can stay on that fairway if you if you carry it over. So um, that's not a hole that I would. You know, I, that's something I'll just be trying to hit in something down into the bottom of the hill and hitting a nine iron or a wedge in. We're gonna go to the Webex. Um, what has been kind of your biggest takeaways in U.S. Open since Congressional? Um. I think you know if anything they they provide different tests every year you know you've somewhere like a congressional and you know the the weather wasn't you know quite cooperative there and it, you know the course probably didn't play the way they wanted it to um 
But then, you know, you go to somewhere like Olympic, uh, which is completely different. It's on the West Coast. It's different grass. It's a different climate. Um, you know, then, you know, somewhere like a Pinehurst where it's completely different again. And then Chambers Bay, Aaron Hill. There's every every year it, it just is a little different. And I think that's a nice thing. It's, you know, it, it definitely doesn't get repetitive, which, which is nice. We're going to go to Ryan. Uh, JT called this a, a different kind of fun, I guess, in like a sick, perverse way. Um, I'm curious if you relish that challenge in, and at what point does it venture into from extremely difficult to then goofy golf? Um, you know, I you play, look, I've only played 18 holes here, but I, it, it would, there would have to be something would have to go seriously wrong to get into the realms of goofy golf. I, I think good shots here seem to get rewarded um it's not you know again going back to my you know oakmont is a wonderful golf course but i think oakmont setup normally is right about on the edge and if you just go a little further then that can start to get a little goofy uh we're here it doesn't seem like that can happen it certainly i mean if you get it way too firm and just you know you get some crosswinds and stuff it, it can get it can get pretty dicey but you know from from what i've seen yesterday and today i i expect that not to happen and it's you know it's cooler temperatures it's you know i'm sure the course can get pretty firm but you know it's a little different in september than it than it usually is in june as well i guess we're going to go back to the webex um how are poppy and erica doing and how is it being at home last week yeah they're doing great thankfully everyone's healthy um which is obviously the most important thing. Uh, yeah, they're good. Um, Erica's bounced back well. She's back doing her four-mile runs and stuff in the mornings, and so a lot tougher than I am. But, uh, yeah, everyone's good at home. It was, it was tough to leave on Sunday. You know, could have spent an extra couple of days there for sure. But, um, yeah, everyone's good, thankfully, and just grateful that, you know, everything's good at home and it allows me to come up here and, and focus on, on what I'm supposed to do. And the follow-up is, have you changed a diaper? I actually changed the first two diapers. <laughs> so I'm very proud of that. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got my hands dirty, put it that way. <laughs> um, how has it been for you playing uh, without fans? Um, and just kind of, are you used to that experience yet? Yeah, I'm used to it now. I think at the start it was, uh, it was different. It was interesting. Uh, you know, I've been pretty vocal on the fact that it took me a while to adjust to, to not having fans um but it it's sort of become the norm nowadays uh so it's like it's different i i wish we were playing in front of fans especially here in new york you know it's a it's a you know it's a it's a different you know it's a different reception than you receive most other places in the country so um you know hopefully you know this is the only one that it's going to happen and you know we can get back to somewhat normal life next year and um you know crowds are allowed back and you know we can you know we can do what we what we want and so yeah but it is it is different but you know it 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 has to be this way for a while unfortunately and uh but hopefully not for too much longer back to ryan tv probably doesn't do these greens justice in terms of the amount of slope and undulation yeah um how do you go about preparing for a putt that could be 50 feet and feature just absolutely crazy amounts of break yeah i think you have to have a lot of imagination you know there's i think um a lot of feel involved um you know and i I, I think especially on these greens it's you know where's the easiest next putt from and where's the easiest next shot from i think there's a lot of thinking ahead on this golf course and and okay where where can i leave this next shot that i have the you know the most routine chip shot or second putt or whatever so there's a lot of just thinking one step ahead to you know so you know you're as you said a 50 foot putt like that you're maybe just thinking of you know if i can leave this eight feet below the hole so my next putt's coming back up the hill then you know that's a good thing right here to mark hey rory obviously it's been 14 years uh since the open was here but with regard to phil it's his first time back since then do you remember what your emotions were when you went back to augusta in 12, I guess it was, and just kind of, you know, did you feel like you had a score to settle? Did you, you know, were you still shaken at all by what happened the year before or that kind of thing? And yeah, you know. um, I was probably, I was probably 
you know, luckily I bounced back quickly and won the U.S. Open at Congressional, you know, a couple of months later. So, you know, I didn't let, you know, I, I let my chance of winning a Masters, you know, slip through my fingers, but at least I didn't squander a chance to win a major that year. So, you know, I, I went into 12 at Augusta. Yeah, you know, the memories that come back and the things that you would have done differently, of course, they all come back. But, you know, it, it didn't feel like I was there and, and trying to get one over on the course or, or trying to settle a score in any way. Um, and I think it, it, it's different, right? It's, you know, Phil's been so close in this tournament so many times. Um, and, you know, you could argue that this was his best chance. He had a few other chances that were, you know, maybe just as good. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a tough one, but I think at Phil at 50, I'm sure he's made his peace with the fact that he, May never win this tournament. You know, he may. He could go out this week and mm -hmm. blitz it, and you know. But at the same time, you know, I think when you get to that stage in your life, and and everything in his life has gone the way it has, you know, his career, his family, everything seems to be in a good place. You know, I think he's probably made his peace with what happened here 14 years ago. Right here, Rory. Uh, you've you've been number one so much of the time over these past few years, but. Uh, in the majors have struggled, I think, more than people would have expected. Is that something that you put any analysis into or, or that you've mulled over to think of what can you do to, to bring it up in, in those tournaments to match the rest of your play? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think of anything, um, you know, if you've looked at my major championship performances over the last few years, I've just gotten off to slow starts. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm probably just put a little too much pressure on myself going into tournaments. Um, and from there, you know, shooting a, you know, a bad score on the first day and, and, you know, putting yourself on under even more pressure from there to, you know, just make it to the weekend and then to try to, you know, play catch up. So I think that's been the big thing. You know, I, I, you know, when I start tournaments, well, I seem to stay up there. I, I started pebble last year with a, with a nice score and, Stayed up there for the most part. I didn't quite finish the, the week the way I wanted to, but um, that's been the big thing for me. If I can if I can start and, and put a good solid run together on a Thursday, yeah, you know, I'm usually right there. And if I could just follow up one quick thing, Gary Woodland said that he thinks that the long hitters like yourself will have a major advantage at this course. I know you're saying you're not going to have to take as many drivers as you thought, but with the rough being where it is, if you're farther down. What kind of advantage do you think you might have? Yeah, I think any golf course that we go to nowadays, the longer hitters are going to have an advantage. You know, I'm not saying that I'm not going to hit driver or, I, you know, I just in my mind, I expected that I was going to hit, you know, 14 drivers um, and, you know, f you know, whatever the par threes are. I hit three wood into one of the par threes yesterday, so it wasn't, le wasn't that much less than driver. But um, yeah, I, like every, every course we go to nowadays, it's, it's the way the, the modern game has went. The longer you can hit it, the more advantage you have. And, um, and as I said, you know, at the start of this press conference, the course does allow you to run balls up onto the green. So if you are in the rough and you are down there, you know, you have a chance to advance it onto the green and, and you know, give yourself a putt for birdie or at least get out of there with a par. So, um, but I still don't think that's a, you know, I'd, I'd still take hitting fairways over hitting a 350 in the rough here. <laughs> right here in the middle of Hank. Uh, so how is, uh, aside from being up all night, has fatherhood relaxed you? Do you come in here with a little better frame of mind? I think so, yeah. I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I, I sort of referenced this a couple of weeks ago. I think it just puts things in perspective a little bit. And, you know, I, not that this, not that my career, it, it matters to me and I, I care about it very much but at the same time it it makes the you know it makes the hard days a lot a little easier to get over right so um and i'm not saying that i want to have hard days to get over but i yeah you, you're, you're a little you know you're a little more relaxed you're you know it's it is like when i say it's not the be all and end all i mean it's a major championship and i've grown up my whole life dreaming of winning these tournaments and that's not going to change but if it doesn't quite happen, then you know I I can I can live with that and go home and and be very happy and and leave what's happened at the golf course at the golf course. I think that's some, maybe something that I haven't done so well in the past is you know I I haven't left 
my job at the office, basically. I've brought it home with me and I've, I've let it, you know, affect my mood and how I am. And uh, I think having that little bit more perspective definitely helps. Last question right here. Hey, Rory. Um, shifting gears a bit. Uh, earlier in your career, when you decided to uh, just start hitting the gym a little more intensely and um, pay attention to what you're eating a little bit more, I'm curious what chain, what prompted that change, rather, and what your advice may be to other golfers who may look to you as an inspiration. In that yeah, so the reason that I decided to get healthier and get in the gym, I had a herniated L4, L5 disc in my back. And um, I had some bone edema in the vertebrae. And, you know, the, the doctor basically said to me, if you let this go any longer, that could turn into a stress fracture. And, you know, that could put you out for a long time. So yeah, it was more out of necessity than anything else. So just to, to get stronger, um, build up a little bit of robustness in my body, honestly, make myself a little um, less flexible, a little stiffer. That was one of the reasons I had so much movement in my hips and in the lower part of my spine that, you know, it just wasn't, you know, there was not enough stability around there to, to protect, you know, the, the joints and the discs and, and the vertebrae. So it was basically out of a necessity to, to do that and get stronger and prevent injury. Um, so that's my big, th big thing is the, you know, knock on wood, um, since then I haven't really had any back issues. Um, I've had a couple other things, you know, you know, a couple not from golf, you know, the ankle and stuff, but, um, you know, even like the rib injury, for example, that's something that I got into the gym and tried to, you know, strengthen and, and, and mobilize a little bit my thoracic spine a bit. And I think as well, once, you know, and, and Tiger's probably talked to you guys about this at length, you know, once one part of your spine is stiffened and, 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 and stable, like his lower is something else up the chain is going to have to take that stress. So for him, it's his neck or his whatever. And for me, it was my thoracic spine. So it's, you know, I think nowadays with how, again, how the modern game is and, and how fast and hard we swing at it, you, know, you have to at least do something in the gym to, to prevent injury. Thanks, Rory. Thank you. Thanks, Rory. Good luck this week. Thank you.